Okay, um, we're back now, and the Nigeria Economic Challenges, uh, it's quite diverse and enormous this 21st century. We've always had problems with our economy. One of the guests we had here was talking about the fact that your car doesn't break down uh, in just a split second. You get to see the signals over a period of time. That was Oscar Omodue, who was here a few seconds, a few minutes ago, who was saying that it's not going to happen in just split second. It, you will see all the signs. And I guess Nigeria has seen all the signs as we were coming along the way from the days of austerity measure, from the days of structural adjustment program, SAP, and the days of so many other things. And we had oppression feed the nation because we wanted to diversify our economy. Mm -hmm. And we've had all kind of projects and programs and uh, portfolio of ideas and adventures with our economy. But somehow, the things that will make it possible for us to read in between the line and then deliver what will take us to the level that we desire to be seem to be the missing link. We're talking about the Nigerian economic challenges, and to have this conversation with us is an economist who is also the group CEO of Global Analytics, uh, Mr. Tokwe Fasua. Good morning and welcome Good to morning, Sunrise this morning. Okay, now. When you look at the state of the Nigerian economy and the challenges we're facing, you have to look at it in depth. You're someone who's into analytics. And when you analyze the issue of Nigeria's uh, currency at the moment against the dollar, against the pounds, and the fact that we've waited so long, and you look at the interest rates, and you look at what is happening in the oil sector, you look at the fact that we've not diversified in spite of mouthing the words of moving beyond oil and nothing has happened, you look at the amount of work we've done with agriculture, and so on and so forth. I can go on from now till eternity. What is it that we have gotten so wrong to bring us to this point in 21st century and 2014? Hmm. Thank you, Annie. That's a very huge question. Um, uh, basically, I think uh, to a large extent, like you mentioned earlier on, uh, we've always mounted diversification. Uh, we've basically had the same type of problems for decades, you know. And uh, however, you know, I mean, I think this time is the second or third time since we discovered crude oil that that the prices are going to trend down. Um, however, it could be said that this time we we uh, we is perhaps the time when we have become most vulnerable, and that that's a result of several factors. Uh, you could take globalization, for example, and the fact that a lot of us are now linked to the uh, global community. Uh, funds flow freely. Uh, shopping can be done with a click of a button and all this kind of stuff. So uh, you could take that one. Uh, uh, you know, you could consider you know, the fact that the population has increased um, tremendously from what it was 50 years ago. Um, and of course, with, with that means there's so many mouths to feed, and everybody is everybody is aware of what goes on out there, and so on. So um, it's easier said than done. I always tell people to say, "Oh, look, we would like to diversify. Looks great on paper, but how do you move to that point where you actually diversify?" So what's stopping uh, us from what's doing, doing that? What's stopping because well, it's not um, just a case of mounting. It's, 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 it's a number of factors, okay. and of course. You would, I would probably say, of course, the biggest, uh, the biggest culprit is political leadership, um, because these are very tough things to do. I mean, I didn't even mention the fact that you also have to consider um, um, the international dimensions to it. You know, for example, Nigeria is a signatory uh, to several WTO World Trade Organization uh, uh, charters, and that means that a lot of times they ask you, look, you have to open up your system uh, to foreign trade. Uh, we also, I think, recently signed the EPA, if, I, if I'm right, and that's the uh, Economic P Partnership Agreement for the Eurozone. Uh, that also says to us, okay, look, we're going to have to uh, allow European goods to come into your system, and they would also open up their system. Now, this is where the problem begins to come in, because you now think about what are we selling, and what are they selling. If you look at even some of the other bilateral agreements, like uh, the AGOA, uh, which is uh, between us and between African countries and the United States, you find out that 98% of the component of what we sell to them is crude oil. I mean, it used to be crude oil uh, between ourselves and Angola. 
um, you know. So we look at what do we have to sell and what do we have to buy. And we seem to have a whole lot of things to buy and very little to sell. And what they're selling is actually um, crude products, whether in agriculture or maybe in mineral sources like crude oil. And that's why we're well. So let me take you up on that then. Uh, why are we signing all these treaties and uh, uh, collaborative engagement? That means we only have one product. And United States, for example, is practically not buying any more oil from us. Why are we signing all those stuff? Several reasons why we're doing that. I always tell people, as a nation, even as an, in, as a, as a, as an individual, uh, you have to do your own risk management yourself. Um, every nation is uh, actually planning, uh, planning ahead. You know, thinking ahead for its people. And you know, if you if you are lucky and uh, you're not forward thinkers or you're not people who project 20, 30, 40 years uh, down the line, this is what this is what you get. It's not only Nigeria; it's a lot. Uh, many most of the countries in Africa. So there are several factors, including different kind of coercion that will be done. To make us sign some of those agreements that we will not pan out for us eventually. I'm, not, I'm sure you're aware that IMF and World Bank at some point in time had to apologize for the panacea that they offered to us in the 80s by way of SAP. And they said, Oh, sorry, we didn't know it was not going to work. <laughs> but you know, uh, it's easy to apologize. The point is, on ground, who is suffering for it? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then again, are we not going to position ourselves in a way that we would? actually get to the same position and Shouldn't seek the same advice and seek the same solutions, you know, instead of finding our own solutions. Shouldn't we be so basically where we are right now, sir, is um, uh, we would have to, we need a new deal, like, you know, like, like you know, Eddie Roosevelt, how far the Americans in the 30s, when they were in depression, and I've always said, from my own view, that, okay, uh, the Nigerian economy has always been in depression. Why? Not I don't look at GDP figures. I'm sorry, but I look at what 